Hello, everyone. Welcome to the very first episode of Spiritual Transformation. And what we're going to do on this podcast is basically we're going to talk to the best of the best thought leaders in the spiritual community. This means psychics, people who can channel, spiritually gifted, people who are spiritual healers and spiritual teachers. And I am so excited to start this. If you have if there, any interest in the spiritual spiritual stuff, spiritual healing, stories of transformation, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel below and hit the notification. And um, today I have a very special guest for my first episode. Her name is Leah. Leah is also known as Healing Code 333 on TikTok, which is where I found her. Uh, Leah has a background in sales and marketing. Um, but what she does with her platform is such a beautiful thing, which is why I wanted to have her on the show. She actually helps people get off of ADHD medication and helps people who are trying to get sober in a spiritual way, the same way that she healed herself. And she healed herself holistically in all aspects. And I just love her story and I just wanted to share with you. And I, a little disclaimer, Leah and I are not doctors. We aren't doctors, are we, Leah? <laughs> We're just going to tell our story and what worked for us. I healed myself through spiritual recovery as well. Leah has healed herself. Um, she is not here to tell anyone to get off of medication. She's just going to tell her story of how it worked for her. So Leah, thank you so much for, I'm honored that you decided to be my first guest. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. I'm so excited to be here today. Me too. So. Um, I guess uh, my first question would be, uh, have you always been spiritually inclined or was there something that kind of like pushed you down the spiritual path? What's your, there, like your always, background? Yeah, I've always been spiritually inclined, but I wouldn't say that I fully started to wake up until my 20s. And then I really woke up in my late 20s. Um, so I woke up first to kind of the lies that we've been told um, from pharmaceutical companies and just in our lives in general um, as a whole. And so I kind of went down that the long path, but I still was, um, you know, partying. I still was taking medication during that time. I hadn't really started my true spiritual healing path until five years ago when I, almost five years ago, when I really decided to do a deep dive. And that's when I started to realize that the medication was hindering me, the alcohol was hindering me. And that really truly started my actual healing journey. Um, so a part of my platform is um, really helping. I can't medically help people get off their medication, but I can help them understand what I went through. And I'm able to kind of um, guide them a little bit when they are trying to get off because it's such a process that no one has been told about. It's really difficult sometimes. So I'm really more of just kind of a guide, but I try to tie everything into my spiritual path because that is, that's really the primary reason I even started to begin with, to even start on this holistic healing path was through my spiritual journey. I was always very spiritual before, um, but the real, real work started when I went and, and started doing inner work. So I love that. I love that you called yourself a guide. That's perfect. And like, I would kind of refer to myself that way too, because everybody is self healing, right? We all heal ourselves. Right. And yes. just sometimes we need guidance on how to get there. Sometimes we forget that we're self healing. Right. I know it's something, I mean, even now, like I get frustrated some days and it's like, you know, it's an ongoing journey. It never really truly ends. We're always healing. Um, so it's hard to say healed yet, but I am definitely on the path of healing. That's a great, that's a great point. I think a lot of people are like waiting for when they're healed. And I love that you said that that's a, because it's a great reminder. We're always healing. There's always going to be There's something new. As soon as I think I've reached it and I'm like scaling along, it'll be like, oh, wait, no, there's here's more to uncover and here's more to explore. So um, it's really incredible being on this path, actually. I'm, it's, it's really transformed my life. And then also coming out and speaking and telling my story was an entirely different level, new level of healing, which I didn't start speaking up until about a year ago. So and your channel is doing amazing. Uh, or is it called a channel on TikTok? <laughs> I guess. 
Well, at, you know, at the end of the day, there was a reason that that's an indicator. It's a, there's a reason that you have so many people following you. This is a huge problem. This is a huge thing in people's life. We're, we're kind of learning like maybe these prescriptions, maybe all these medications are doing more harm than good. And then, you know, is this really necessary? Are they over prescribing? You know, is this something that we can um, figure out other more spiritual, holistic mind, body, spirit? solutions and obviously you have did you want to expand on that at all on like how long it took you to get off of medication or absolutely so i just want to preface and say that this my whenever i got off med my major dark night of the soul so i think and it was through spiritual guidance a kind of like divine intervention that i even decided to get off of the medication but i had to wake up to what it was doing to me first so um, that's kind of how I started on the path. So it was really me listening to my inner guidance and really, really actually putting in the work. But as far as the medications go, I just want to say it's not everyone's path to get off the medication. I'm not trying to force my opinion on anyone else, but if it does trigger you what I'm saying, then maybe there's something in your inner being that's trying to tug on you and say, hey, this is um, standing in your way. You know, maybe it's time to pull it out. But um, that's what I try to say to you on my page. So I don't force this down anyone's throats. <laughs> but it, yeah, transform. And I do believe that the medication was standing in the way of um, me accessing my true spiritual gifts, of me like standing in my truth and in my power, and me fully embracing who I was or my authentic self. I was doing a lot of masking when I was taking the medication. So that and that did serve a purpose as well. So yeah. Yeah, but get absolutely. Yeah. When we, I know you quit drinking as well, and and so did I, and I, we quit drinking around this. So I was, a, I'm a little over four years alcohol free. What was yours? Isn't yours around four years as well? I'll be four years, December seventh. So awesome. Yeah, awesome. And and I think that's like that's kind of what you're saying. It it matters. Like there was a purpose for it at the time, you know. I I drink started drinking alcohol as a young teenager and very young very young yeah. and and the thing is is it served a purpose i kept it around way too long and it, it brings us relief we should never you know i'm not really for criminalizing people who are seeking relief you know that's really all we're doing we're all trying to just feel better right that's why we take any type of medication or or or, or any substance whatsoever whether it's drinking it or taking it in the form of a pill we're just all seeking relief Absolutely. so um my next question, I said, I, I know that, okay, let's see. Okay, I know by viewing your social media posts that you no longer drink. So what led you to that decision? I think you kind of already answered that, but did you want to expand on that at all? Yeah, well, I will say I didn't quit drinking because I went out kicking and screaming with everything that I quit, first of all. Like, they, I was getting guided to quit drinking before I did, uh, and like the medication, I was getting guided to, to quit that, and I and I would I just held on so tight. But once I finally quit the medication, I was realizing, too, that every time I drank, my hangovers would last, like, twice as long as they used to, and I was, um, it was... It was just really bad. And I was like calculating how much time I was actually feeling well. And it was pretty much one to two days a week when I, you know, calculated as the hangover. And, and then I would just start drinking again, like on Thursday. So I would drink on the weekends. And then um, it was just the cycle. And I realized energetically from a spiritual standpoint, I was trying to do so much healing after the medication that it was just interfering with everything. And it really is, I mean, as far as an energetic standpoint goes, I really felt like it was holding me back. Um, so those were the major reasons I quit, but also just like doing a tally of my life. I was realizing that, you know, not every time I drank bad things would happen, but every time something bad happened was when I was drinking in my life. So yeah. putting that all together kind of made me realize what am I doing it for, you know, for a couple of hours of feeling a little bit of relief and, you know, quitting the medication was my biggest addict, the medication to being my biggest addiction. So it was my uh, like house of cards is what I'll call it. So I pulled the biggest one first and then I was able to quit everything else. So including the bad food, everything centered around me healing from the medication because I had to feel better in order to not take the medication anymore. And so, and also with my ADHD, the alcohol I realized was making my ADHD symptoms worse. So mm -hmm. 
I finally had made the decision after one crazy night at my best friend's birthday <laughs> that I was done. And that was the last time I drank. So that that's that I remember you telling me that because I also quit after uh, my last time drinking was a uh, my a good good friend's birthday twins actually so i was like all right this is my last time and and it was a knowing it was different than the times like you promise yourself and you're right. like you you know this was like i knew that i knew that i knew that i knew that I, there was an energetic shift you know i was done there was no more back and forth anything i did not leave any windows open <laughs> yes same for me too like i just knew that i was done but i didn't know how I was going to do it. And then I kind of just took it 30 days at a time with the alcohol. And I didn't realize it was so eye opening with the alcohol because to society standards, which I feel society standards are very low. I technically wasn't an alcoholic, but I, you know, when I quit, I was still craving it every single weekend. As soon as the weekends would hit, I would crave alcohol. It was like, I was, it was so weird. It was like, I was on a schedule because my body was so yeah. Well, it's, it's programming. It's kind of like we brainwash ourselves. You know, we've been, it's just a half, like, I kind of think addictions for the most part, they're habits that went awry, you know, like, and we brainwash ourselves into them. And it's important to know, like, if you brainwash yourself into or program is might be a better word into any habit, you can also have the ability to, to program yourself the other direction out okay. of it. Yeah. I you know, it was a big program I had to understand. And, and I don't know if I mentioned this but the medication was for ADHD. So I really believed, and even though I was on a spiritual path and considered myself very healthy for the most part, like I really believed I needed that medication and I had to unravel that belief system and change it to believe that I could heal myself and digging really deep. And, and the same for alcohol, like just believing that you need it to have fun or believing that you need it to um, relax or you deserve it. Like we, to see it as a reward now is interesting to me now that my mindset's so changed it's like how did I ever view that as a reward I, I felt terrible the next day it was you know it was really tough so I relate to everything you said 100 percent and it is it is interesting like it does become to come to a point especially when you are learning about spirituality and like you know I'm a big law of attraction thing a uh, law of attraction teacher and into all of, like you said earlier about feeling better. I can't remember what you said exactly, but you, you made me think like Abraham Hicks, if anyone knows Abraham Hicks would say, there is nothing more important than the way you feel. So what are we doing to ourselves when we're like literally taking substances, whether it's in pill form or liquid form <laughs> or smoking it, whatever it might be that makes us, you know, it lowers our vibration when it's so important to you know to, to have our vibrations high so that we can create our better reality so we the better the more we the more we raise our vibration the better we feel the more we're going to attract what we want the better inspiration that just comes through right we're blocking ourselves we literally block ourselves from that in, inspiration and synchronicities, they, they're happening all the time, but we don't notice them because our vibe, we're vibing so low. Exactly, that's true. And it does, it clears out the space and you all of a sudden have more time and more energy. And of course, I bad days, you know, And but I, I actually, you know, now I let myself feel and I feel like I was masking a lot with the medication because if I had a bad day, I could take my medication. I would blame it on ADHD and I would take my medication. It was like this never ending cycle, but I was always controlling the outcome by doing that. I was never facing my traumas or facing um, my past situations that needed to be healed. I was just constantly going from one situation to the next and not addressing what truly needed to be healed underneath. So, and I feel like quitting everything and getting that inflammation out of your body is one of the first steps too. Like the inflammation from medications, even bad foods and all of that. I mean, it was a process to get me to where I am today. It took years. So it wasn't like I just woke up one day and just quit everything and had a perfect diet. It was like, it took me years of removing things and trying to figure out what caused my inflammation you know, and that's what helped me stay medication free. So, but that helps the vibration too. So, yeah. And you mentioned the other day 
about um to me about or, or i think in a video oh you did a video on my cards you were talking about like this this isn't the spiritual bypassing type of law of attraction which i thought was so wonderful that you said that because a lot of people are like they think they don't understand the work right they think that it's just positive vibes only and then yeah. it actually gets to a point where it's toxic positivity like you're that's talking right. about feeling your feelings you know we have to feel our feelings that's doing the work we don't suppress them because those all, everything we suppress stays in our body yeah. and we're not getting away with anything we're actually that's actually how you create dis disease disease in your body and by suppressing things and and you know masking them all the time we it's 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 okay to feel feelings absolutely yeah i love that because yeah and i know there's a lot of creators still now and i think maybe a lot of people who just get on their spiritual path because they're so excited and they want to feel good forever and like but that's also what i think is getting a lot of people on medications too because they feel like something's wrong with them because they can't be positive all the time but what's truly happening is something is stirring and they're you know, root, there's a root cause for everything and their body is trying to show them like something's really wrong here that you're not addressing, whether it be diet, trauma or anything like that. And so we have to address those things in order to get into the flow. So sometimes, you know, it's totally, it's completely fine to feel bad or depressed. And we've made it such an issue in society that no, you shouldn't feel that way. You need to be getting on medication. And that's one of the big things and I don't know that the original secret where they made it that big movie like in 2006 I don't know that that wasn't too push into the mental illness agenda as well I've always wondered that because I'm not I'm not sure I know that they've done a follow-up um I, I I do love that that's out there because it was a great introduction it was very basic right, right. and I love the introduction um, but they've done follow ups called um, the meta secret. Actually, it's free on YouTube where they were. It was, it was almost like a little bit of an apology because it did kind of it, it was a very much into spiritual bypassing, wasn't it? They don't talk about taking action or anything. Right. It's kind, it kind of is. It did promote a little bit of um, yeah, like deny, you know, denying feelings. You always need to feel, feel perfect. So like the mainstream um, part of it. I'm sure that was probably what Rob, Bob Proctor wanted in there, but it probably was not in the actual movie. Like the actual movie was more like, as long as you feel perfect all the time and everything is wonderful, then all this money is going to flow to you, you know? But like when we did the real work, like even with Abraham Hicks, it's like you learn, you've got to feel your feelings. Like there's no way out of it. So our feelings are indicators. They are okay. guidance not to be ignored. And like you said earlier, it's perfect way you said it is our bodies are literally trying to tell us they're they're screaming at us sometimes like something's wrong. This is something that needs to be addressed. And then you're drinking it away or taking a pop and a pill. Right. And then right. you never get to the root cause. You never get to the reason your body is even having that issue. So so would you say um, were you able to balance out your brain chemistry when like naturally yeah. holistically yes i was so after i did um after i quit the medication which was brutal that was the whole thing itself which i was not prepared for and medical um community prepares people for this because i don't know if there's just not enough information after long term um, but it was it was pretty brutal like not just the withdrawal but i felt your dopamine is all out of whack for up to two to three years after. So yeah. until you can get it right, you know, which is what you can do is like what I did was I started doing trauma healing and then quitting drinking helped. And then also quitting, quitting any food that was causing inflammation and then doing a heavy metal detox. At the time I did a parasite cleanse, which I'm really due for one and I haven't done it yet. <laughs> so <laughs> But um, the heavy metal detox was amazing That because everything goes back to inflammation in our body. It really, truly does. And if we would have addressed that before getting on medication, I bet I would have never needed medication. But instead, I got a medication, which over time just completely caught, wreaked havoc on my central nervous system. And again, this is over time. In the beginning, like when people first hear this, they're like, this isn't true because I've been on it and I, it works great for me. It works great for everyone in the beginning. And then over time, it slowly starts to mess with your central nervous system. And that's when it starts to cause all the issues. But we do heal. I've even talked to people who've been for almost 20 years. And they 
they're able to heal from it. It just takes a lot, a lot longer than people realize. And they fall back into the trap of getting back on the medication because they think that there's no hope, but it really is a lot of self-discipline. I exercise a lot. I also, my diet is really, really clean. And then um, also the not drinking has helped balance me, I believe. Yeah, I would say that I had to go through years also, and, and, and I'm glad I, well, now I'm telling everybody this, but I'm kind of glad I didn't know up front. <laughs> I felt better pro progressively every day, but if someone's like, oh, yeah, it's going to be years before you, you know, um, are completely um, detox, really, because I had to also do the same, because we've done so much damage to our body through these chemicals, and there's also just things in the environment anyway on top of things that we're not doing to ourselves right right <laughs> and, and our foods like you're talking about with the chemical all the toxins like now i also it is it was it was like oh now i gotta change this now i gotta change this and um i struggled with autoimmune the past three years and just recently figured it out um yeah and it was foods i was eating so and actually a, a, i'm gonna have a a guy on here as a guest who channels and he actually is the one who helped me figure out what I needed to take. Like, honestly, I'd been to doctors over the last three years and they just give me prescriptions or something that just made me worse. And right. so like, I mean, I know this sounds bad, but going to see a doctor is my last resort at this point in time. I have a, a medical intuitive and I ha I'm gonna be using, Lincoln, the channeler that I'm talking about, I'm abusing him. And anytime I have an issue, because this was one session instead of three years of being handed prescriptions that that only masked things, and like literally all of my all of my autoimmune issues vanished. That's incredible! I love that. Vanished. Was it, session mm -hmm. that he did? was it an energy healing session that he did on you? No. Um, so I had two people help. One of them was a medical intuitive and her name's Julie. I'm going to definitely invite her on here as well. Um, but she, uh, she actually knew it was like some sort of like allergy and, 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 and a buildup, a toxic buildup. And I don't really want to say what it is on here because I don't want to scare people uh, away from food. But um, but it's it was shocking. OK, what it turned out to be was shocking. So first she said it. But then when I hit my session with him, it was just he channels his higher self. Mm -hmm. And so he channeled one on one with me for an hour. And all of I, you know, I had questions prepared. We, we don't he didn't talk to me first. He didn't know what any of my questions were going to be or what they were going to be about. And um, my concern was health, because when you don't have your health, you don't have anything <laughs> what is that saying um a healthy person has a million wishes but someone who's not healthy only has one wish right it's true get I healthy mean, again that's why they attack our health so much i feel like with through all the chemicals and everything that they're doing because really we can't function properly We'll also need the medications if we if we're unwell or we, we don't need them but we've been presented the system that makes us believe we need the medications. Yeah, since you went there, I'll go ahead and say it. The food industry is in bed with big pharma and of course, and, and they are gonna say things that are healthy for us and our, our pyramid, our food pyramids, a bunch of yeah. bullshit, you know, yeah. and- <laughs> So bad. It's the number one thing that is late to mental illness um, symptoms and it's in everything and it's it's horrible I mean of course we can do our best to do all organics and everything like that but you know it's still I, supposedly organic still has some pesticides of some form in it but glyphosate specifically so even people who are eating really healthy but they're not eating organic they're getting the glyphosate in their systems and that can cause ADHD anxiety and depression is like, that the stuff that they talk about with Roundup? Yeah, that's what they okay. spray up and everything. So, okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really sad, you know, and then even our water, even our water can't be, you know, yeah. tr trusted. I know. So, so I, you kind of, we've kind of already gone over the next question. So 
Um, but we'll, so we'll just skip that one because we, we definitely got into it. So do you think that medication can numb and or reduce spiritual gifts? I do, but I didn't believe that when I was on them. And I have people who are on them who tell me they work around it. And that's what I believed I was doing too. I don't want to speak for other people's experience because there probably are people who can work around it. But for me personally, and I didn't understand until I got off of it, but it was blocking a lot of my gifts, a lot of them. And I wasn't able to properly get in the flow like I needed to. Again, it goes back to like the constant controlling of the feelings um, and just like wanting relief instead of just actually doing the true work. But I believe that the medication, it just, it masked a lot. So I was still having spiritual experiences, but it was not the way it is now. Like it, I am so much more expanded and my mind is just, maybe part of it was the process of, you know, me detoxing and the, you know, everything I went through in my body as well. But I just personally believe that when I was on the medication that I was masking a lot of it and I wasn't having a true spiritual experiences like I do now. I think it messes with our connection. We all are connected to God or source energy, whatever you want to say. We all have a connection to our inner being and all that. But when I think when we drink and we have all these chemicals, it causes a, 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 a bit of a disconnect and it's just, it's, we don't have the clarity that's right. necessary. I think clarity is like one of the top things that I'm so thankful to have back, you know, yes. even brain fog went away. Like I didn't even know I had brain fog until it was gone. <laughs> Ink, and then you're getting all of your um, telepathy. Everything's like activating and flowing and it's just a whole different experience. And you're able to dive with so much deeper and part of it is just, you know, uh, again, the not, not masking. So mm -hmm. that's just really huge. So, but I, I mean, it's multiplied my, uh, and I had to go, when I went through my dark night of the soul, I was like completely cut off for two years mm -hmm. to, so wow. to the point that my whole spiritual experiences were because. So it really took me. And then somewhere after about two years, everything just like popped back on. And yeah. I guess it did my, to heal my body first and I needed to, I really did essentially, you know, work, sleep, take care of my son and go to bed for two years is what I did while I was healing. And kind of like you were hibernating or in a little cocoon for a while. <laughs> long period of isolation, you know, and it's like, and, you know, even now I'm still, I still, I think I enjoy the isolation. And then when I was on medication, I was very extroverted the meta, and I didn't realize that was a medication thing until I got off of it. And I'm like, Ooh, I'm really actually an introvert. I really like being, alone, you know, and going within and doing all the spiritual, you know, everything that I've been doing lately, but I was just constantly out. And I think that was part of my issue was like constantly wanting to escape, needing mm -hmm. really wanting to escape. And, and again, everything goes back to me not facing my traumas and who I really am, all of those things. And I was really, really masking so bad. I know I keep saying that. <laughs> so. Yeah. I think those are the reasons like escaping our reality, um, seeking just some sort of relief. And I think social anxiety is another huge one. Like you just said, like, and I agree, like I used to think I was an extrovert and I call myself a, a introverted extrovert now you know like i i love being out and around people but for about three hours and then i'm like i'm done going home now guys bye you know and then i like to go home and recharge you know so i do love i think i absorb energy so much that i've just kind of okay time to take a break i'm not big you know and then that's part of being an empath as well you know like you being around crowds kind of you get it, it causes some anxiety and i i think that's why i used alcohol as a, me a medication self-medication because i can feel other people's energy so deeply and for the longest time i didn't know it was other people's so i thought it was my own energy yeah the same with me it took me so long and then you had to learn how to like separate it all the time block it <laughs> Yeah, I block it. And then, you know, even just going into like grocery store now, it's like, okay, whoa, that was not me. You have to like brush, be very constantly aware, I guess, of your surroundings and what you're taking on. 
So absolutely, absolutely. And doing things like we do, even on social media, I think we got to be aware there too, because we can get psychically attacked. I've seen people psychically attack you. <laughs> pretty, pretty bad. And I know I get like, I go through phases where I won't post and I, it's because I feel like I, I'm getting attacked psychologically, like psychically and I, I'll, I will like put a pause on it. And then I get frustrated because I'm like, I shouldn't have to pause just because of this, because I shouldn't have to, it's going to happen either way. And if we put ourselves out there, it's like something that we're just constantly going to have to deal with. So I'm just learning, I'm learning this year how to truly train that, that people can just do that through videos. They can see you on a video and get, send you, send you what they want, it. <laughs> but we're highly protected. They really can. Yeah. I asked for protection, but I also have learned recently and tell me if you agree. And I'm not, I'm not even 100% on this, but I used to be really a lot more into the protection, protection, you know, and, and all that. And then just this past week, I mean, I heard it before, but I kind of was like, eh, but this just past, I keep hearing it. And you know how sometimes you keep hearing the same message and you're like, yeah. maybe this keeps popping up for a reason. Like the more we're constantly like, oh, I need protection we're kind of putting ourselves in that fear, like that we, does that make sense? And I thought, wow, that really resonated with me. Like if I always have to feel like I need to protect myself and block this and block that and say this prayer and do these little things, like maybe, maybe it's a bit much, you know, we're, we're, we're keeping ourselves in a vibration of like, we're disempowered. Oh, I, yeah, I agree. And I just learned this six months ago. So I stopped, doing all of the protections. I just know I'm protected in ways, but also I love that. Too, is I've learned to transmute it. So, which took a while because you feel it at first because we're so used to, I feel like there's some sort of, like you said, it's like we're living in that fear when we're constantly doing protections, but also we, instead of growing stronger, we're just living in a little bubble. Whereas mm -hmm. if we take the attack and learn to transmute it, and I learned this from someone on TikTok, actually. So, but I started doing it and it worked. So it's taken me like, I want to say I started doing it around March and it's taken me now I can feel it coming on and I'm learning really much quicker to transmute it. There you're are going to have to teach me Well, you're going to stay on this video when we're done recording and I'm going to be like, tell me how to transmute it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Now, but yeah, I'll definitely teach you after. It's definitely, it's a whole different, and I don't know, like, I always think there's always a reason we learn everything. So if someone right now is like just new to spirituality, you know, maybe it's good to still keep that protection up, but it's like good once and expand, like you hearing it, like me just now hearing it was like really crazy to me because I'm like, how is this the first time I've heard this before? But it makes so much sense that we get stronger when we just absorb and transmute the attack versus building the fortress which i used to do like a pyramid or you know i don't know if you're if you see that as well but like the light around you and everything that I, walks I had a bunch of things i had things and i don't do that anymore and actually i if, if the way you just said that i might be already transmuting naturally just you probably are yeah yeah and it really is i mean i had to kind of learn it's just it's basically just taking it and learning and it, I also went through a phase where I was doing like return to cinder, which that just causes a loop I've learned. So oh, yeah. we want to transmute it and like send it back with love so that if anything, so that nothing can come back. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so revolving door. So yeah, it may send it back to them, but eventually it comes back around energetically. But that's what that I makes. Work. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you for that. Um, so when we were talking about the medication numbing and reducing spiritual gifts, I know we had, when I first DM'd you, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago or whatever, I was talking about indigo children and things like that because I have never been diagnosed with ADHD, but many people who know me would beg to differ. They'd be like, oh, that chick definitely got ADHD, right? Yeah. I've never been diagnosed. I've never, like... I mean, yeah, when I see like a test, like for a little quiz, I'm like, huh, yeah. <laughs> that sounds familiar, yeah. but I have had several, so I, I'm like, the reason I'm going to be able to have so many psychics and channelers and all that stuff on my show is because I have probably talked to over 300, you know, in, in way over probably in my lifetime. It's just been a hobby of mine. I love learning about 
different healing modalities, different teachers, just different spiritual, everything, you know, so I'm, I'm just so I'm, I'm there for it. Right. So I've had, I've had several tell me off the bat, like, as soon as I sat down, you're an, you're an indigo child, you're an indigo, you don't have ADHD. And then when I go look and I'm like, what? Yeah, you're a beta generation indigo child. Like, and so they'll tell me, so I'm like, okay, I've had this happen. They don't know each other. These psychics don't know each other. And then I looked up, I did some research on indigo children and the energy. And I sent you the article. It literally says uh, uh, people who are indigo often get mistaken for having ADHD because it's so much energy. Like you have, it's like really hard to harness. And so yeah. you have, you have this crazy energy compared to normal. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's all, we're also getting lots of downloads and information yes. through and instead of learning how to like harness the gifts and like channel and like meditate and like be able to process it properly. We're just diagnosed with ADHD, told something's wrong with us, told, you know, and that's why so many kids, I would say like, there's so many kids, they're not even putting out numbers right now. And I'm, I'm sure it's because they know it, it's astronomical because they're just so many kids being born with all of these gifts and they're just throwing medication at it instead of like being the way, I mean, at this point, I would think that we need to change the way we teach ch small children because there's so many, we can't just have the whole world on stimulants. It's going to like, it's going to be a disaster. I mean, kind of like what you referred to earlier is like, maybe that's the plan to have everybody medicated. It, it might be because really you can't, and I would say medically, I think it changed me as a woman, like the what I attracted, the things I was doing, like, I'm not blaming it on the medication, but I do think on an energetic level, it changes you chemi you know, chemically it does. So I think you're going to attract different people in different mm -hmm. life. You know, it, I could go even that far. And even, um, even with birth control, the same birth control pills can do that as well. And they have put our whole generation. Yeah. You're cutting out just a little bit. Oh, hang on a second. Can you see me? I can't see you, but I see your name. There you are. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So what was I saying? The, the birth control, birth control. That changes our chemistry as well. And I think that may even start a lot, a lot of issues yeah. with, so with fertility, with how it, it has been proven that women change, um, chemically with birth control pills. So I mean, have this ability to do that. And if you do that, then you're going to prevent the right people from, marrying the right people and creating like power couples and I don't know the agenda can, I believe goes pretty deep so yeah I had never thought of that I never thought of that but yeah I luckily like I, I know that I was prescribed birth control when I was having like irregular periods a long time ago but I could never take them like they made me instantly crazy so they made me crazy too I quit taking them after a couple of years yeah I mean I didn't last more than a month so yeah. that's a blessing in disguise that's what we call a blessing in disguise yeah. <laughs> so um if let's okay i'm gonna ask this this last question for you and i, I really like this question so if all of your tiktok videos were gone were going to be erased like they just vanished but you were allowed to save only one which video would you save and why there's a TikTok, um, and it is, I think, 10 ways to heal your ADHD naturally or 10, 10 things I would have done besides get on prescriptions. And it's actually just a video of my face, and then it lists all of the things that you can do to detox your body. Also, you know, the anti-inflammatory diets, trauma healing. It lists everything that I talk about all in one video. So I, I would save that one. Nice. You know, so you just give me an idea um, send me that and I'll put that a link to that one in the show notes so people can oh. see the exact one you're talking about. And then they can subscribe to your channel on TikTok. Okay. Awesome. Healing, healing code three, three, three. And yeah, you guys, I'm going to also have a, the way to reach Leah, um, to, to get on her TikTok. That's really the only platform that she uses. She's really not 
using Facebook or Instagram. It's all about TikTok, but I, I love that. I think that's so smart. I'm a little envious, you know, I've got too many platforms. I get overwhelmed sometimes. Yeah, and I think if I had a platform like you do, like you have a business with it, I think I would probably spill it over to the other platforms. But yeah. because I'm, I also can really, because I have a son too, that's like, in multiple sports and then my job, I feel like I, I need one portal to access people on. <laughs> yeah. Because and actually really give the help that people really need. And I do calls with girls um, all the time that are struggling, trying to get off these medications. Um, and then if y'all want to DM me as well on TikTok, I'm happy to respond to anyone. So and she does respond. I can tell you that. Yeah. Like I I just love that you were my first guest. You gave so much information. We, okay. we talked about a lot of things that were very unplanned <laughs> and I love it. I love being on. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And you guys, anyone watching, please go ahead and ask any questions and Leah and I will be sure to get to, to get to them in the comments. Go ahead and, and ask questions below whatever platform you're watching this. I know it's going to be on YouTube and I'm going to try to put it on, you know, the shorter versions. Whatever platforms let me put the full version, we'll be there. So I hope, gosh, you know, it was such a great talk. Thank you again so much. And did you have anything you wanted to add before we sign off? Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much. I'd love to do it again if you ever want to. We can go get a little deeper too if you want. So. I would love that. I will take you up on that actually. So guys, anybody watching, if this resonated with you, if you love all this deep spiritual talk, if you like kind of getting weird now and then, please subscribe to this channel, my YouTube channel. And I'm going to have these every weekend. I'm going to interview one guest every weekend. So thank you so much for watching. Leah, you stay on and we're going to say goodbye to the audience. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.